Last March, with the coronavirus spreading uncontrollably across the United States, cyber soldiers released their own contagion by sabotaging a tiny piece of computer code buried in a popular piece of software called Solar Winds. The hidden virus spread to 18,000 government and private computer back door to the 18,000 infected networks. Microsoft has assigned 500 engineers to dig into the attack. One compared it to a Rembrandt painting, the closer they looked, the more details emerged. When we analyzed everything that we saw at Microsoft, we asked ourselves how many engineers have probably worked on these attacks. And the answer we came to was, company, well, a new phone or a laptop, you trust that that is secure when they give it to you. And what they've shown us in this attack is that is not the case. They have the ability to compromise those supply chains and manipulate whatever they want. Whether it's financial data, source code, the functionality of these products, they can take control. The hidden virus spread to 18,000 government and private computer networks by way of one of those software updates we all take for granted. The attack was unprecedented in audacity and scope. Files went rummaging through the digital files of the U.S. Departments of Justice, State, Treasury, Energy, and Commerce and for nine months had unfettered access to top-level communications, court documents, even nuclear secrets. And by all accounts, it's still going on. Hello and welcome to my new video. It's a pleasure for me to see you here and what we are talking about today. So today we are talking about build info. What is a build info? What's contained? How to generate a build info and why a build info can help you to protect yourself and your supply chain against attacks like the solar wind tech. If this is interesting for you, you're working in the field of DevSecOps or you just start learning about it, then this might be exactly the right one for you. So stay tuned. By the way, my name is Sven Ruppert, I'm from Germany and I will take you to two journeys. The first one is here to the German woods called Harz and the second one is through this build info journey. If you are the first time on my channel, then please, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe my channel. It would be a pleasure for me to welcome you as my new subscriber. So now we want to start with the topic and let's start. Okay, today we are talking about build info and talking about in build info means I need to know what, what this term means. Uh, the term build info is um, composed of two words, build and info. And the first build means we are talking about how to build a binary or the situation or the context of building a binary. And the second one, info, is exactly this what is the context of this build, what informations are available during this time I'm creating this dedicated binary. Build info is nothing like a general description of the CI environment. It's nothing like a general description of how to create binaries. A build info is exactly bound to one binary. So one binary will have a corresponding build information. A build info is one to one with a binary and uh, this means if you're building a binary a few times you will have a few times a corresponding build information and um, why we need this we will cover in a few minutes um, what's part of it we will cover in a few minutes but the basic concept of this build info is that i have enough information about the whole system so that i can analyze later what happened why it happened or what was included in this build, what was part of the build and it's including the CI environment, the operating system and so on. But the main thing here is really the build info is exactly bound to one build of one binary and um, it tried to cover the whole context of building a binary. After we thought now what is a basic concept of build info, uh, we need to know what is part of the build info. And the build info itself is not only the description of what dependencies you have with the version, uh, uh, the date and the time. You need way more information to have a good context or overview of the context during the time of during the creation of this binary. And that means we are aggregating, for example, the 
include the operating system we use for the build, uh, Docker environment, um, environment uh, variables, um, version of libraries and so on. And the next thing that is important is if you're talking about dependencies, it is not enough to write down the dependency and the version. You need um, additionally, for example, the fingerprint of the binary because you want to make sure that you can identify exactly the binary you used for this build. And this means not only the description of the version and uh, the name of this binary, you need additionally, for example, the fingerprint that you really can identify the entity that was used here in this part. So um, all together means the build information is containing as much as possible information. And if you have more information inside your build info, the context is bit, you have a better description of the context. And with this better description of the context, you have a way better way to analyze the context or the situation during the time you create the binary for, for example, the uh, security analyzers or for some other, whatever you want to find out from this build info. I'm focusing here on the situation you want to analyze it for security reasons. So it means a post-mortem analyzers to see what happened in the past so that you know why something happened or how something uh, have been done. And well, the information built info is a very, very broad topic. And if you can collect more information about the context, you will have a more powerful built information. So we saw what components or what information is stored inside the built information. We saw that this is a very, very broad approach. So if you have more information inside your built in info, then it's more helpful or more powerful. So why and what was the key point why we are all discussing this now? Um, the, I have to go a little bit to the history and um, the initial attack was the SolarWinds hack. So it means this um, company SolarWinds is creating um, software that's um, managing network infrastructure. They were hacked and the hacker group uh, not destroyed something. They, they changed the um, uh, build infrastructure from SolarWinds. So SolarWinds um, created binaries from their product called Orion. And during this time this binary was created, the modification done by the hacker group um, modified the binary in a way that it was compromised already. So all mechanisms that based on the final binary, so a fingerprint on the final binary from SolarWinds pushed to the customer and the customer is verifying the uh, fingerprint was not working anymore. This automatic update pushed these compromised binaries to, I don't know, 50,000, 60,000, 80,000 customers immediately. And SolarWinds itself um, has, or they have, around 300,000 customers. So the potential was really, really big. And the infection rate was dramatic. So 50,000 infection from US government, petrochemie, pharmaceutical industry, space, defense, whatever, all the big companies were on this list, more or less. And this means that this attack changed the mindset because we have to identify not only the final elements I'm consuming, I have to uh, check the whole production line because attacks are not only against me as a target, they're against the supply chain. And this means I have to protect myself or I have to check all information that are necessary during the production of my own product as well. And that was a reaction that is pushing now this um, S-bomb, the software builds of materials or the ingredients list that you have to create if you're creating software. And this is an executive order of cybersecurity. So what is executive order of cybersecurity? So for all that are non-US uh, based, an executive order can be uh, initialized or can be done by, by the US president. And this executive order can uh, change the way the government is working internally. It's, it's like the CEO of a company. You can't change the rule outside of the company, but you can change the way how this company is operating. And this is with the executive order. So the president, US president, 
can create one of these executive orders and then there is a time period from very very short until a few days months weeks whatever so that this executive order will be active and uh, he's not able to change the rules how to tax it or to um, whatever law and all this stuff so this can't be changed but the way how this government is working internally and the executive order of cybersecurity done by Mr. Biden a few months ago um, changed the way how the government is able to operate software. What they are doing is, or the, the executive order describes that every component that is used or running by the US government, some IT system, so in detail software, software that run, uh, is running, uh, must fulfill NASBOM or the requirement of NASBOM. NASBOM is a software bills of material, means all components that are used directly or indirectly by this component must be written down, must be documented, verified and all this stuff. So why should I care if I'm not working for the US government? Well, the main thing here is that the US government says not only your own created software must fulfill this one no all software so if the government wants to use an amazon service the amazon service must fulfill the s-bomb requirement so all details about what is used inside this amazon service must be documented until you have really the last piece in the chain so it could be that someone is creating open source library in some country somewhere in the world and this library is used indirectly by a company that's producing something that's used by the US government and so on then this S-bomb will reach you somehow so if you're creating open source projects you can just say I don't care someone else should do it if you are a company it could be a requirement otherwise you are not making business anymore directly or indirectly and the other thing is, if you want to support your own community, it makes sense to provide this information because then it's just easier to consume your um, software that you created. Okay, so now how the S-Bomb fits to the build info and how the build info can help to protect you, your project or your supply chain against attacks like the SolarWinds attack. With the executive order of cybersecurity, there is now a general awareness around this topic and now the question is how it could help you, not only for this requirement of NESBOM, but how it could help you to uh, secure your supply chain or to, to make your system safer. Uh, the built information contains a lot of information, means you are able to analyze after you're compromised what was the way the attacker took to, to come into the system. You are able to identify what components are compromised, how many of these components are compromised, so, but sometimes it's way easier. So let's say you, you see that you have a bunch of dependencies and this build information, what's doing is that it's grabbing all dependencies, direct or indirect dependencies, uh, writing down the, the name and the version and creating from this binary that you're using actual fingerprint. After this, you can um, verify by a machine if every fingerprint um, is exactly the fingerprint from the original source you're grabbing it. Why well, you should do it? So if, if you're declaring a Maven and dependency, you can grab this via Maven Central. You can grab it via a mirror. This mirror can be compromised, Maven Central could be compromised over the time, maybe. And you have your own cache. This could be compromised. For example, your local machine or your uh, CI agent or whatever. So it makes sense to verify with every build if this checksum is the same. And if you have now two build information from two builds, you can automatically create a diff of this one. So you see if not only the code changed, but the environment somehow changed as well. For example, you see that always if the build agent number two is doing something, you have compromised binaries, then you know this one is affected. 
if you're checking the fingerprints between builds, then you see what is the point of time that this infrastructure was compromised or this binary was changed, whatever. So you have a lot of different ways to identify what's happened in the past in a very detailed way. You are able to identify what was the past to break into your system and if you're just actively scanning with every build information and creating the difference, you can identify something is happening now. So all these possibilities are good. And additionally, if you're just creating the software builds of material, this is just service and support for all the people that are consuming your private project, your product or whatever. So in general, yes, this build information is easy to create. And on the other side, it can help in so, so many ways that it would be just would stupid not to use it. We learned about the basic concept of the build information. So why we need it or what's part of it, uh, what are the information you can store inside and that this is a base for the software builds of material. Okay, but what are the generic requirements uh, for, for um, build information? Build information itself should be stored immutable uh, because it would be a disaster if you can manipulate this build information after it is created. So make sure that whatever technique you're using to store build information, it's more or less immutable so that you can combine data, but you can't modify data anymore. So um, if you're able to modify it, you will lose trust to this build information because you never know if this is compromised as well. Okay, talking about combination of data. So um, the next important point for built information is not only immutability, is accessibility as well. And we have two parts of accessibility. One part is, for example, the machine readability. So the machine must be able to consume this data immediately. And uh, then you can use it, for example, with AI or machine learning techniques to uh, identify pattern on the difference between build, different builds of the same binary. And on the other side, you can associate more data to it. You can use, for example, vulnerability and compliance scanner to scan the dependencies from all of your uh, builds so that you have this information about vulnerabilities immediately at the same place where the build information is. You have to divide it a little bit because the build information itself is immutable, but the associated data is um, constantly updated. So the amount of vulnerabilities is changing on a daily basis. But you need one place where you can present this data in a, in a good way. And now we are talking about human readability. So a human must be able to consume this data as well. So for example, making a diff between builds, navigating through dependencies, checking out what's JDK, what uh, library version it's used and so on and so on. And the associated data as well. So for example, the data about the vulnerabilities and license scannings. So altogether is more or less a generic requirement for the built information, immutability in one part, and then the accessibility and the way to combine or associate additional data in the other way. Machines must be able to read it and humans must be able to read it. So we heard a lot about um, built information, how we can use it, what's part of the built information, what are the generic requirements and so on, but how to create aid build information now inside your project. So if you want to have a quite easy way, then you can use a component from the free tier that is um, available on the JFrog platform. Um, you need two components, Artifactory for storing build information and building the diffs and associate with additional data, for example, with vulnerability scanning. And the vulnerability scanning is done by X-Ray. So Artifactory and X-Ray both is part of the JFrog free tier. Um, I will give you the URL somewhere here. Then you can register for the free tier. I think there is no credit card information needed. And then after three to five minutes, it depends a little bit on the data center you're choosing, um, you will have access to the free tier. After this, we can start working with this. And for this, we need later the CLI. But now, register for the free tier, please. Okay. Just if you want to start working with build info, you need at least Artifactory and X-Ray to analyze it. So, nein, nochmal. 
If you want to work with built info, you can use the free tier from JFrog for analyzing and associating this data with vulnerability infos. For this, you need a free tier and you can just search for JFrog and free tier or go to the URL jfrog.com start minus free. You will get this screen here and what you have to fill in is your first name, last name, a valid email address and a password you want to use for the platform itself. Select the cloud provider of your choice select the region if you prefer different geolocations and then um, choose a server name. This server name is important for you because this will be part of the URL you're using for all the other steps. So don't forget it. If you're done with this and you want to start a trial, check the um, checkbox here to agree terms and conditions and press the button try it now. So you will get an email and after a few minutes you have a ready to go instance in the cloud. With the free tier, we have now the place where we can store build info and where we can access build information. We can add additional data with X-Ray to this build information. But now we need something that's extracting all the information from the build itself. And this is part of the JFrog CLI. Inside the JFrog CLI, we have access to different functionality from X-Ray, from Artifactory distribution and so on. But additionally, we have this wrapper for the package manager or for this build environment, for example, for Maven. So we need now the JFrog CLI so that we are able to, uh, to extract this information on command line interface from the Maven process during the time we are um, building the project. And this I will show you on OS X now. Okay, we have free tier now. The next thing what we need is a JFrog CLI because with this we want to generate the build info during the build process and to get the CLI you have different options. Um, go to jfrog.com slash get CLI. Here you will get different options how to install it and I will take here the brew install JFrog minus CLI version on my Mac OS X. But feel free whatever fits best to you. I'm choosing here homebrew for my Mac. To get this uh, installation method you want to have, go here to copy, to this icon here, then to the command line of your choice and go. In my case, homebrew is installed already. If you don't have homebrew, you have to install this one first. But um, I installed the JFrog CLI already a few minutes ago. So here you will just get the information that's already installed, but on your side, it will start this installation process. It will take some time and then you have the JFrog CLI. To test if the JFrog CLI is running, just type JFrog and you will get some uh, command line information. We have the free tier with Artifactory and X-Ray. We have the command line interface running on the machine, but now we have to connect the command line interface to uh, the Artifactory instance so that uh, the command line interface knows where to extract data or where to push data through. And how to connect this, I will show you now. Okay, we have now the free tier instance or whatever instance you are using with Artifactory and X-Ray. We installed the command line interface and now it's time to connect this command line interface through the Artifactory X-Ray combination. For this, uh, remember the server um, name you have uh, chosen. So it was servername.jfrog.io. And now I will show you how to connect your command line interface to this one. For this, type jfrog, jfrog. Um, this was a command line and then if you are looking here you see that you have command line config to add configurations. Okay, let's say jfrog config. With jfrog config uh, you have the possibility to add, edit, export, import and so on different configs. Here I have a clean system say jfrog config show will show nothing, it's empty. Let's do it again here on a free screen. So nothing. And I want to add now this connection. JFrog config add. Now it will ask me so for the server ID and the server ID is in my case Sven R. Now it's asking for the platform URL. Be aware that you have to include this HTTPS in front of HTTPS. Sven R. Gen frog.io. This is a full URL. 
Now you have here this the possibility if you have different instances, if you have an own installation on prem or whatever. But in my case, I'm using the cloud version. I can just say save and continue. Now it's asking for um, access data. So it uh, you can use user password from your admin account or whatever account, or you're using an, um, an access token. I have an access token here already. I'm pasting it right now and that's it. If you're using the cloud, then there's no reverse proxy installed and that's it. Now we can see if it is all right, jfrog config show. And here we are, everything is all right. We have all bits and pieces together. So we have the place to store, we have the command line interface and so on. But the only part that's missing is a project we can use. You can use your own project or you can use my prepared project, by the way. If you want to do all these steps together with me and get more insight in the practical way of doing it, then register for my workshops. They are for free. Um, the next upcoming dates, uh, upcoming workshops are on the website, so you can choose what's the best date for you. And they are available in German as well as in English. Choose what's best for you. And well, with all of this, we can start working now. Okay, we have now the command line interface connected to the Artifactory um, and X-Ray installation. The next step is something we can use to generate a build information. And here I'm using my uh, demo project that I'm using for my workshops. And you will find it on GitHub. Search for Java minus workshops slash jfrog minus free tier minus JVM. This is a Maven project, nothing fancy in it, but it will show you what we want to see today. So clone it please on your local machine so that we can work in this folder with Maven. You need Maven installed, you need Java installed and just try if you um, can compile it. By the way, inside this project, inside this Maven POMXML, change the URL to the Artifactory instance to your instance that you created or you are using. That's it. If you want to do all these steps with me together in a workshop, feel free to register for one of my uh, free available uh, workshops. And the uh, next dates and times you will find on the JFrog homepage. So feel free to register for one of these workshops and then you can do all these steps with me together. And additionally, you will get more information about the DevSecOps term itself. So feel free to register. And um, yeah, now we want to work here with this. Okay, we have now all components together. Now we want to um, use the command line interface to extract the information from the build process itself. So for this, we have to configure the Maven command or the command line interface to be able to grab all this stuff out of Maven. For this, we need some information. So JFrog, the first thing is if you are checking the commands against Artifactory are starting with RT. So here, clear, jfrog rt and then maven config. I've done it previously, so I have already a configuration. So in this, um, uh, at this time, uh, they want to override it or asking me if I want to override it. Yes, I will override it now to show it. Then resolve dependencies from Artifactory. Yes, I want to resolve it. Then Artifactory server ID. This is exactly what we used in the config phase a little bit earlier. Then it will connect and ask. And here is a repository for release dependencies. My release, uh, depend, uh, my release repository is uh, Maven release, release. You see, you have this auto completion on command line. I've it's, it's quite nice. If you don't know how to create Maven repositories inside Artifactory, check out my um, how-to about how to set up Maven repositories. I will go with you through all the details how to create local, remote and virtual repositories. So here we have the Maven release. The next is a question for the Maven snapshots. Maven snapshots. Then it will ask if I want to deploy something. Sure, I want to deploy. Then server ID, exactly the same here in my case. Then what is uh, deployment is maven and release. And for snapshots, maven snapshot. So 
I don't want to filter anything. I want to push everything through it. So I'm not filtering anything. And then now it's done. So now we are ready to start building our first build info. Now it's time to create the build info. For this, we are using the command line interface to wrap the Maven commands. Instead of Maven clean install, we are wrapping this command with the JFrog CLI. To get this one, I will, so I'm too lazy to type this command every time. So this is why I'm using the history here now. So what we are using here is JFrog, then RT for doing something with Artifactory. Then maven clean install, the maven command I want to set. And uh, then I need additional parents for the build name and the build number. Um, make sure that this build name makes sense for your project because this is exactly, exactly the logical name you will find inside the UI a little bit later. And the build number is here set manually. So make sure that you're having a strong increasing build number and you're not overriding builds. This is a disadvantage if you're doing it on command line without any help. But here I'm just using this command now. So now the JFrog um, CLI is wrapping the Maven command. Uh, the Maven command is um, regularly yeah, executed and it took here seven seconds. Okay, so next step would be how to publish build information. So after we created the build info, it's time to publish this build info. And for this, we need the jfrog command again. So, oh, here, yeah. so jfrog, then it has something to do with Artifactory, build publishing, and then I need the build name. So here it's jfrog free tier workshop, and I use the build number 001. So, setting up this command. What it's doing is it's connecting through the Artifactory instance to the build info repository and pushing this stuff in. Before we are going to the UI, I want to um, show here uh, what is locally stored. If you don't want to use Artifactory and X-Ray, you just want to create this build info because you want to um, use this information for an s -bomb, the software builds of material, then uh, you can go here and uh, Target, target, and then we'll find build info JSON. If you're looking at this one, you will see that there is a ton of information included, including all dependencies, hash sums, and so on and so on. So this is pushed to Artifactory, and we will have a look inside the UI in a second. Okay, what we saw um, is that we manually have to manage this build number. This build number can be just a number, but it can be a concatenation of, um, for example, date and time. And if you want to use this one to give automatic build number so that someone can create this build number on, um, on a bash, um, on command line in a bash script or something, I have an tiny example here, for example, with bash scripts, what I'm just doing is I'm creating the current date and time, concatenating with an underscore, and then I'm using exactly this command, uh, this variable, this environment variable inside this um, call of jfrog CLI. And here you see that the build number is now filled with an input or with a value of the variable current date. So if you're doing this and then you're just using the build script, the good thing is that you have everything together and you can just invoke it on command line. It's easier. And then you have some, some kind of strong monotonic increasing build number. Whatever fits to you, um, play around. You, uh, if it is done by a uh, CI environment, it's easier. But if you want to use it on command line, just think about tiny scripts like this. So we created and published build information already to Artifactory. Now it's time to check how it looks like inside your JFrog platform. So for this, log in to your free tier or whatever platform you're using and then go to the point Artifactory. Then you will see the menu point for the um, build information is called builds. If you're clicking here, you will get a list of all these build names you uh, used over the time. We use uh, in this demo here JVM free tier workshop and we are checking now the build number. We created the build number 001 and here we are 
there is the build information. The build information is associated with different data. So for example, here you have the modules and inside the modules, the jar and POM you created with the repository path where it's published. If you have environment variables, for example, in your CI environment or whatever, then you would see them here. Additionally to this, we uh, combined X-ray data to this build. So you created this binary and you had dependencies and this dependencies, for example, had some vulnerabilities. So you can scan for uh, violations, security uh, issues, so it means vulnerabilities, license issues and so on. And if you have dependent things or someone is depending on you, so descendants and ancestors, ancestors, oh, it's a difficult name for me. Okay, so if you're depending on something or someone is depending on you. And we are looking here at the security issue, uh, so the vulnerabilities. And if you're clicking here on this vulnerability information, you will get exactly the data that's available, CVE number, if it is wrapped in some jar, web archive, whatever, and so on and so on. So you have the X-ray data associated to this build. The build information itself is immutable, but the X-ray data will be um, constantly updated based on the security database updates. Okay, so this is more or less everything. Oh yeah, then you can have issues if you're connected with an issue tracker. Uh, you can build divs between different build information so that you will get highlighted. Okay, here this dependency changed or the, uh, some configuration changed or other things. So environment variable um, inputs or values are changed. A release history, if you're building a release and then history, you see all this information uh, itself. And then if you're using pipelines to build this, you have dedicated information about this one as well. And the JSON file, it's exactly the same what you can see on command line. This is just the raw file. So altogether is a full build information and it's stored inside Artifactory. Okay, time for the conclusion. What we learned today. First of all, we learned what the basic concept of the build information. So it is a way to store the context information of a build to associate this one with a single build so that you have all information available. If you want to analyze if something is happening or you want to identify if there's a cyber attack and so on. The second thing is why we should take care of this build information now is more or less based on the executive order of cybersecurity from the US government because over short or long it will affect us because somehow we have to deal with this S-bomb, the software builds of material. Software builds of material is a subset of the build information, so build information is way more than an S-bomb because it will give you a lot of additional information and you can combine this information, for example, with X-ray data about vulnerability and compliance issues. Altogether, you can use for free as a free tier to store the build information and to make it accessible for you as a human and uh, machines. And we have the possibility to build diffs and all this stuff. And additionally, we can combine the information from X-Ray to show vulnerability and license issues as well. Everything's for free. If you don't want to use the free tier, you can use the command line interface, the JFrog CLI, just to extract the data from your Maven build, for example, and store it locally in your XML file and use it for whatever tool you want to use it. So that is all. If you want to try it out in a practical way, feel free to register for one of my workshops. I have them in German as well as in English. And just check on our website for the next available dates, register, and then you can explore together with me in a practical way what you can do with is um, build information, how we can extract it and combining it with different DevSecOps techniques and tools. Okay, that's it from my side. Um, what I will do now, I will pack my stuff. I will explore a little bit this environment because so many nice places are found here on my way to this place. And I think there's a lot of more interesting stuff there. And if you want to know what places are found, subscribe my YouTube channel because I will use these places for one of my next videos for sure. So whatever time is on your side, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day and stay safe. And I would say, see you in some of my workshops, webinars or videos. Bye.